so proud. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's so nice. Hey guys, welcome. I'm so excited to chat with you guys uh, about the brother's son. It's such a fun, fun series. It's so much action. It's action packed. It, there's so much to it. But before we begin, I know you guys just ate, so we have dessert for you. Oh, you guys thank you. Unwrap it. Yes. yes. No, okay, we can. We have <gasps> the chocolate. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is, okay. Oh, this I is the one I always buy for people okay. yeah, as gifts. Really yeah. John, really? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, wow. I've never had this one's cute. These are the good I ones. Snack and just relax and enjoy. Okay. Thank Wait, you. Are you Wait, why are you choosing this one first? This is the one I always buy. Oh. This okay. is from Taiwan, then. Yes. Taiwan. Yeah. Oh my god. This is the one in number two. Yeah. Wait, which one's number one? Which one's number one? You can tell us. Oh, I like that one. Whichever is your favorite is number one. Mm. I like the packaging on this one. Yeah. So I'd love to know how do you guys come mm. to come to this specific project, and what were you most excited about this project? For me, it came about just as a traditional audition. I didn't really know anyone else on the project, so I'm emailing my inbox, and that began what was a I think a seven or eight week audition process. Wow. I was doing all my callbacks in Taiwan at like. Six in the morning. Wow! And then the final round was uh, a mix and match with uh, Sam and other actors. Um, luckily, it worked out for both of us. Uh, but what drew me to this, first of all, was the it, the theme of the project and the background of the project both resonated very deeply with me. Um, the theme, obviously, family is a huge, huge, uh, huge importance in the series, and I'm very close to my family. And then the background of the story, we span both Taipei and LA, which are both places that I grew up in. So it was really special for me. Yeah, I think I first heard about this um, on social media. <laughs> and there was like a massive casting call for it on like, you know, Cape USA and a bunch of um, Asian American uh, media outlets that are uh, entertainment media outlets, you know? Um, so I saw the casting breakdown for it. And, you know, my reps are super on top of like submitting me for projects and stuff. But I remember seeing the breakdown and was like, okay, this Bruce guy, um, he's uh, a naive college student who's raised by a single mom mm. who wants to do improv comedy. And I was just like, wow, this guy just sounds a lot like <laughs> me. <laughs> so yeah, I just remember sending it to my reps and was like, hey, I already know you probably have submitted for this, but like, please, please, please. I, I, I think I have a good chance here. <laughs> And um, yeah, the casting process was was quite long. I remembered it being longer because I think mainly because I think we were waiting on you because <laughs> you were busy. So. I, was, I was shooting another movie at the time. <laughs> yeah, so it was a long process. And then I, I feel like we were all actually supposed to have uh, our final audition together. Really? But for some reason, you guys didn't. I was in New York City. Mm. No, I, I yeah. knew that, but I think I think they wanted to. I remember talking to Jenny. Um, Jen Jenny Ju, who direct, who is the casting director, but I remember she wanted to bring you guys all in too. Oh. But I didn't. I don't think we had the time. I was gonna say my process was pretty similar to Justin's in the terms that it was traditionally through my agent and reps. So I got the the sides, and I just remember reading the log line. And I think back in the day, it was something. Alexis, super driven and addicted to spicy hot Cheetos, and I was like, okay, <laughs> this girl I know. Just like and then, um, <laughs> I remember like reading the pilot and just, it was one of these experiences that when you read something that is so good, you just feel like, okay, I don't know what I have to do, but I have to be part of this. Mm. And I remember just taping within two hours of getting the sides. Wow. And generally I take a few days just to let like it sink in, but I don't know, I felt like a connection. Wow. And then I remember two afters I sent in my audition, Jenny Ju's office was like, call back. So I was like, okay, something must have worked yeah. there. Um, and then we did the traditional like callback to producers and then they canceled my producer session. And I was like, okay, it's over. Like, oh, yeah. I didn't get the job. They just didn't even want to see me for the producers. <laughs> um, but I think it was logistically something going on. Mm. Um, and then we're here. <laughs> so, I don't know. Probably because Justin was shooting a movie. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> everything's <laughs> Justin's fault. Like, let's just always just defer to that. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I also came to this project uh, through an audition. I was filming in New Orleans at the time, um, and I didn't have like a, like a neutral background. So I know Jenny actually on the callback was like, "Could you change?" Because <laughs> 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 I was like, "Oh, like you know, whatever." And I, I got the email and I read it, and I wasn't given that much information actually about my character, other than like she's charismatic and really values like funny people. 
people. And I was like, <laughs> I hope I embarrass my people. Um, but I do value funny people. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, okay, half, I got half of that. Um, oh. um, I did my audition and then I did my call back like maybe a week after. And then I got a call from the producers, from Byron and, um, and Brad. And they were like, my manager was just like, they just want to talk. <laughs> I was like, wow. What do you mean? <laughs> like, so you said the yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Was so like, annoying, it was though. all cryptic. Yeah. Like, like I was at a bus station. And I was like, <laughs> um, okay. And like they were like, you got it. And I was like, oh, oh. I was really, I thought it was awesome. I've never been called by like yeah. the, yeah. the, the yeah. producers and the creators. Oh, I thought they were good. So call. I knew that they thought that it was like a very special. I think from like the beginning it was a very special project. So they kind of treated you guys like the triad, like we gotta talk. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, yeah. that's how they yeah. that's how they did it. Yeah, they I don't know about you, but I think it was, it was they yeah, they, they checked you guys. They made sure oh, yeah, you yeah. like they needed another round. Of yes. No, for me, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they yeah. made it sound like they were telling me that I didn't get the part. Yeah, yeah, they made it sound like <laughs> it was gonna be a no. We're for sorry. Her. Really? Yeah. yeah. They kept on saying but yes, and and, and you know, it, thank you so much for coming in. <laughs> yeah. It was like you know, we really worked hard. so hard for seven weeks. And <laughs> sick. You worked so hard, We're and sick. we ultimately had to give the decision to Netflix, yes. and yeah. it was just a hard decision. So I just want to thank you for all thank the work you. And the whole that time, I'm did. like, I know. I'm gonna cry. I'm like, no. yeah, just say it. That, that would be so just cool if they did all that to be like goodbye. No, but I mean, it was such a long process. So I would understand if <laughs> right, if they yeah. wanted to call just yeah. to be like, thank you, Aww. but. You know, it doesn't make it hurt any less. This yeah. was your initiation. Yeah. 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 So, like, getting you ready for being scary as like, part of the role. Yeah. And speaking of, speaking of that, because like it's so interesting because it's like a triad, but yet there's so much deeper context to it mm. regarding, you know, Charles and it's Byron Baker, who's, you know, in charge of the Jade Dragons at the moment. And, you know, Bruce, an improv actor who once called his mother's dream, something that we all relate to. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Alexis, a determined DA with, who wants to advance and like move up in, in the world that's dominated by men, of course. And then Grace, you know, who has a thing for Bruce. And, you know, it, it, but there's something deeper going on with her, who I thought was a stoner at first. I'm like, oh. <laughs> just, I like, like that. just like Madison. <laughs> how, how was it for you, when for all of you, to explore these aspects of your characters and how deep did you go because a lot of it is related to like similar to you guys like you said earlier. Yeah, I, I actually thought that I just related to it incredibly easily. Um, I, I felt like from the start, just it, something about it was so surreal, the entire experience. Like I, I, I love telling the story of, of the first time that I, that we, that we shot at TK's apartment um, because it just, it's like a, I, I feel like it encapsulates my whole experience with this project and how I personally relate to it. But we show up on set, um, on location in the 626 in San Gabriel. The first time we shot at TK's apartment, which is played by June Lee, the fabulous June Lee. Very funny June Lee. And um, I show up and I see the apartments in front of me and my jaw drops and I'm like, oh my God, this is, I walked by these apartments every single day when I was going to elementary school. Wow. And I, it was just that moment became so surreal to me because of like how intimate this whole location, this whole setting, this atmosphere is in the brother son and how it related to this city that I was so familiar with that the world truly has never seen before yeah. on, on TV like this, you know? So, so I think that um, as somebody who, you know, grew up in the 626 and, and in San Gabriel Valley, my phone number is literally 626, you know? And then, um, you know, like I grew up with a single mom uh, who, who raised me and, and I wanted to pursue, obviously I'm, I'm an actor now, but I wanted to pursue acting and, and my mom was not very supportive of that because, you know, she loves me very, very much and doesn't want me to um, struggle, so she wanted me to, <laughs> to, you know, get these more traditional jobs and find stability in my life. And so I think a lot of these themes that Bruce is feeling, I think I directly felt in my throughout my life. And so I think that's why it, it at least allowed me to be very natural with the way that I approached Bruce and gave me a lot of confidence to just make sure that the choices I was making with Bruce were the right ones because I knew in my heart that that was just the reality of my life. Do you guys have any aspects for you guys that, that you know, that you explore these aspects of your characters and you, like, how was it for you to explore it? Mm -hmm. I think one of the most fascinating aspects for me is also 
in terms of being an actor is doing a lot of research um, before a project. So with Alexis, I feel like there was so much to her just career-wise, you know, being an assistant district attorney, I think uh, through ba Brad's office, we were able to get some meetings with people that were actually working at the LA district's attorney. And it was so fascinating just to hear from them things that I've never even thought about, you know, how does the crime differ in San Gabriel Valley versus the West Side, you know, like mm. the profiles of crimes that are happening. And then I got kind of into a spiral of like thinking of like, what does a day in Alexis's life look like? What cases are is she reviewing? And like, what does that do to her psyche? Because you are truly looking at the worst in people, you know, people create like mm. committing crimes and that inundation. Like, what does that do to you? And I think that was such a fascinating push and pull to play with. And I'm so grateful to be given, not the responsibility, but the opportunity to explore those worlds that I, in my day-to-day -day life, don't really encounter. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, I actually, kind of similar to Sam, I walked into the Sun House, like, because yeah. I was rehearsing, like, behind it. And they're like, do you want to go in and look? It's like, sure. And I go in and I like smell my childhood. Oh, <laughs> like, like, oh my God. Like, I was like, like down to the like, the little knickknacks wow. like on the tables. I was like, mm -hmm. I, like, it's so little. And it probably, I don't even know if there were like close ups on every single detail in the house, but it was, yeah. it was so real. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, I grew up here and having that represented on TV was just so exciting for me. And I think for Grace, like, with everything that happens with her, I, uh, after reading, uh, all of the scripts that were available, I I wrote out a letter to Bruce, like from Grace's perspective, just oh. like explaining everything and like, because oh. I think it is. I mean, it was a bit wow. of like a stream of consciousness, yeah. like way to like access sort oh. of uh, like all of the ways that she would think about it, also just the ways that she would talk about it. Um, and you know, I'm I'm in college right now. I'm part of my college's improv group. Like I'm very wow, like <laughs> I'm very like you know. I think that aspect of Grace is very near and dear to my heart. But wow. yeah, there were there were a lot of parts to it that I was excited to explore and um, and dig deeper into. But also just really excited to see represented on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you do martial arts like like uh, Brad and Alexis do martial arts like in training and everything. But now you get to be a baker. Do you get, get, like, get to have fun exploring that aspect? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I think for me, exploring the character of Charles, yeah, I, I love him tremendously. And I think he, the time that I got to spend with him, I, I started in my own personal life and my own experiences first. So it really forced me to examine and remember some of the core memories that I have as Justin. So whether it be like, hmm first heart to heart I had with my dad or my mom, or like my favorite memory with my dad. Like my dad's a rather traditional um, Asian man and his parents never told him that they loved him. But one of my favorite memories is we used to live in Hong Kong and we would play badminton together in the parking lot with no net. And I just remember rallying with him and he, that that's one, that's to this day still one of my happiest memories with him. So. I, I think it was a huge privilege to be able to do that in creation of this character. And a weird thing was is that every day that I spent with Charles, it made me a lot more grateful for the own life that I have. Wow. Because, you know, Charles has aspirations of being a baker. I got to chase my aspirations. I think I get to live the life that my character would want. And the fact that I have that, it just, it, it drives that gratitude home even deeper. Um, in terms of you know, martial arts I love, I've been doing it for the last 10, 15 years. Uh, baking was something that I had to work on for the show. And uh, I, so I baked two things. I baked a chocolate fondant cake and a Japanese style cheesecake. And uh, the cheesecake was good flavor wise. I think the top cracked a little bit. I wish it could have been a little more jiggly, but it was, it was a good first attempt. But I think what was really eye opening with that experience is like, I'm more of a chef than I'm a baker, but I think the reason why baking means so much to Charles as a character is because it's one of the few moments in his life where he can look at a recipe, uh, know exactly what he needs to do down to the milligram, down to the time, down to the humidity of baking something. And it's one of the few moments in his life where he has any semblance of peace or normalcy, mm. whereas the rest of his life is quite chaotic. So mm. that was a really interesting way into the character. Mm. Well, you know, 
you know, Heidi and Madison, it's of all time we see that as Asian women, oh, yeah. you know, as be leader and like take control of situations. What would you say is the most empowering thing that you got to do and the, and the most empowering thing about your character? Mm. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. Let me see what you can. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. I mean, she just suited him. Yeah. She got what she wanted. Yeah. I think I need to think about that for a second if you want. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, I think Alexis is someone who is so unwavering with her sense of self. And she has such an intrinsic understanding of where her place in the world is and how she operates in the world and i think that quiet confidence that she exudes and this innate ability to stay true to what her beliefs are regardless of circumstance mm. that really felt refreshing to me because that's not necessarily how i operate in my day-to-day -day <laughs> life um and in general it's just so like freeing to play someone who is so much more like intelligently capable than I am sometimes. <laughs> you know not, not, you know, you know what I mean? Like I just feel like she is aspirational to me mm. in a lot of ways. That's kind sure. of what I'm trying to sure. say. But also I still ask myself sometimes when I'm in a pickle, I'm like, okay, but what would Alexis do? And so I still carry that piece of her with me and I think it's kind of like my little guiding Wow. That's cool. Hey, don't say yourself sure. No, I know, I was a joke, you know, like, <laughs> but like, she is a, you know, she should, like, she went to law school, I didn't, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, you did something better. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> come on. Okay. Yeah, what I think with Grace and with the women in this show, like, kind of was uh, showing for me and representative of for me was kind of how different, um, differently strong and like, capable and, awesome women can be in, in so many different capacities, I think. And with Grace, she has this ambition and this unwavering sort of moral compass that I think leads her to, to be this, like uh, uh, in, in one way, very like hard headed and, and, and very complex and charismatic and, and vicious person. And at the same time, like deal with these complex feelings and emotions. And I think representing that and, and having that be part of my character, yeah. um, and, and having, you know, the storyline that I got to have, like that was awesome and, and, and just so exciting to play as an actor. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I actually feel like within even our relationship dynamic, the way we flirt with each other and stuff, I really feel like you take the lead on also approaching <laughs> me as well a lot, you know? I mean, I think Grace has a lot of self-determination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Riz. Riz is a little word yes. for it. Um, that's and, so true. Yeah, Grish. but I, I think like Grish. also Grizz. Um, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think so like good. and with Alexis too. I think separate from our relationships with you guys, yeah. which is also so fulfilling and, and awesome. Like we have our own sort of complex like mm -hmm. storylines yeah. and and, yeah. and ways of navigating the world that was really exciting. To play. I also Ooh. think, yes. if I may, like yeah. the other women in the show, it's not just a cookie cutter like good or bad or strong or weak. I think everyone is so complex and dynamic, yeah, and nuanced, and they're they're all morally ambiguous. Like humans don't exist in the black and white. And I think it was so refreshing to play someone who has these layers that you can peel back and like, it's not just one facet of being. So I think that's great. It shows that you guys are so, it's so impressive and powerful to see you guys. And then on, one, on the other hand, we see Justin and Sam, same brothers, you know, we're very different. Yet they see, share some of the same values when it comes to their, mo their mother. You know, did you guys, how was the bonding experience between you two? And did you guys do any big fun things together to kind of build that relationship of indifference and then together? <laughs> oh. We, the bonding experience was, we were just talking about this earlier, but it was, it was so quick, you know, I think, <laughs> one, it's just the amount of time and proximity that we spend together, but I'd probably say one of the main things is that we have a very similar sense of humor. We do. We, I, we, I have a story that I want to share so bad, but right. I know we can. So which one? <laughs> <laughs> which one? Yeah. I don't know which one. I can't, which one? Can you I can't say it. I can't one. say it. I can't say it. Okay. Just pretend like we didn't. We didn't. Well, anyways, like... no, we, we bonded. Like I, I, 
<laughs> what? Yeah, we can't say that. Yeah, we can't. Anyways, we, we, we had, I'll just put it this way, we had um, some very brotherly bonding moments. Yeah. We, we kept it real with each other when we needed to, but we were always there for each other. And, you know, I, I think ultimately, I, I feel like I have a bro for life and yeah. it's, it's, um, it was, it was a lot of fun and it made those days, it made those long or difficult days easier knowing that he was there. And, um, and, uh, I think part of that arc that we had as a character, you know, initially Charles is quite resentful and frustrated and annoyed by Bruce, but as they bond and as they develop a respect and love for each other, I think Charles goes from, um, resentment to seeing that Bruce has the life that he cannot have and that he thinks he might not deserve. But as he sees that now as something that he wants to protect and preserve since I can't have it, but at least if one of us does, he's happy and I'll be happy. Yeah, I almost feel like we, we had to pull back a little bit just because I feel like we got along like oh, really, really well. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. we have, I feel like we have like such similar sense of humor and and it was like so, we were so on top of just making sure that we could get that connection that like we hung out like really quickly right up right off the bat although there is there's a story that apparently our showrunner did not want us to hang out and oh, want yeah, yeah. so 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 yeah so apparently brad falchuk wanted us to um meet for the first time again on set when we were filming well, we didn't know that oh, we just we yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, and we found got... that out after like our third hangout yeah, so we were like oh, oh okay well, <laughs> we can act like we don't know each other. yeah yeah You're so like, i love him now <laughs> yeah. 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 exactly yeah yeah but but i feel like i feel like that first time that we had our our like chemistry test I didn't know this guy at all. And so doing that scene with him and then kind of staying in that moment and feeling like what we felt that day was the basis of building sort of that distance between us in the, in the relationship. And once we did connect, I mean, that was the easy part in my opinion, but yeah. You know, the series is great because it has a lot of story development, but it also has really badass martial arts. You know, it's so much fun to watch. And all of you at one point did some sort of yeah. fighting or stunts oh, yeah. Yeah. in the series. You know, you tumbled a lot. Yes. <laughs> Bruce, so. That was actually Aiden, <laughs> uh, our, our, my stunt double that he, who did the tumbling. <laughs> he was a professional tumbler. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so <laughs> you guys, you guys killed it too. Yeah, yeah what was, was the fun. training like for this? And, you know, especially for Sam, I know you have a little bit of experience, um, but and that is me who, like, you know, that, that, that fully trained. How was it for you guys doing all these stunts? Or the series? Yeah. Um, I think something that I found so interesting, I've never been in a show or a movie or any sort of project that has had martial arts um, be such a center of mm. the story. And I think in working with so many like fight scenes or stunts and, and seeing that and witnessing that as a, as a cast member as well, like yeah. that was so exciting to see and I was just saying like I was watching it back and it's like these fight scenes sort of have such a significance in the story itself and you see why they're doing what they're doing and I think like that was the first time I've really like been able to like witness intimately like how physicality and how uh, fighting and how so the art of, of combat you know screen combat can like manifest in such a like because it is an art. Way. It does yeah. feel yeah. like an art. Oh, yeah. It's like, and it's it hard. Is. It's a really yeah. hard thing. Yeah. How was your training? I was training for you guys for this. It was so fun. It was honestly one of my favorite things to do. And I also want to yeah. shout out like our amazing mm -hmm. stunt team. So they were just the kindest, most patient, most, you know, willing to take a hit when I swung the wrong way. Like <laughs> they were so kind and it was definitely fun to get out of my head and like into my body in that way. Um, and luckily we did shoot my stunt sequence like at the last day. And I remember doing it and then I tasted like I was like, why is there sand in my teeth? And I was like, oh, 
and I like chip the front Yo, of my face. that's skin. hard. I, that's I hard. I had to like go down and I was like, okay, it's fine. Like wow. you don't have any more scenes left. Like that's, let's just do crazy. it. So we did it and then I just made it an appointment at the dentist and they like shaved <laughs> it down. <laughs> and now they're like shorter but nice. straight. So oh. it's like, uh, oh. no, okay, they are. <laughs> no, that's hard, that's hard. It was good, I Do loved it. When you get up? Oh, I don't <laughs> think so. I think there's other things you'll probably focus on more. <laughs> wow. For you guys, how was the training? Uh, it was. Oh. Yeah, I, I feel like this, this guy, guy got yeah. to experience significantly Sam, more. So Sam he got was, the most. Sam's very athletic, so he was overqualified. Yeah, I, that's what I was told. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can't train you anymore, otherwise you're gonna look too, <laughs> too, too smooth. Um, yeah, which is so it sucks because they're so good. I mean, you know, led by Justin Yu. Yeah, we yeah. you know we we were really lucky that we had an amazing stunt team. You know, we had just Justin Yu, Eric Brown, and Michael Laird. We're all from the original John Wick movie. Yeah. It was it was a dream come true. I've I've always you know I grew up enjoying martial arts. I grew up watching action, um, and I truly mean this. I'm not saying this just because Michelle's on our show, but Crouching Tiger is my favorite action mm. fighting movie. There's something about the way that they capture the fights and choreograph the fights, and there's so much story and, and swagger imbued in them that I still think that is pinnacle. And what I loved the most about the action in our show is that. It's it's all in service of the story, right? Like every fight, there's a theme, there's a reason why it's there in the story, but also there's a story within the fight. It's not just violence for violence's sake. Um, one of our main sequences is a huge turning point for my character, and um, the training was was rigorous and intense, but but I loved every minute of it. Of, I, I loved every minute of it. I think. If I wasn't pursuing being an actor, I might have wanted to have been a fighter in a different life. Wow. Um, so at most, it was 10 or 11 sessions a week of stunt training, choreography training, weapons training, and, and weightlifting. Um, but yeah, it was that process was a dream come true. I'd, I'd do it all over again. I just want to up the ante next time. <laughs> I also thought that the, the stunt sequences that we had were just very creative too. Yeah. And, and I remembered when we were walking through the the choreography, or just the way that the, the um, what are they called? The when they scream? The previs. The previs yeah. yeah, the previs. I was just like, this is so creative. I've never yeah. seen fights like this on yeah. TV. You know, our first one involved inflatable dinosaurs. You know, and <laughs> okay. and we have ones we're using pots and pans to fight, and it's just so creative. There's this whole running gag with with taking the shoes off during a fight. You know, and. Yeah. I just there's there's so many and, and obviously our, our golf sequence I mean I I've never seen anything like that before so it's just the creativity across the board and I think we all had a lot of fun challenging ourselves especially the stunt team of challenging themselves to create something that people have never seen before and so I, I really think that people are going to be watching something very fresh and and authentic and new that they haven't seen especially on TV like. You don't get just one, you get you get so much. You get <laughs> you one get every episode. Plenty. Yeah. How would you best describe the series in one word? Ah. Killer. Killer. Yeah. Oh. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, bloody good time. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the story, that's the with a with a dash yeah. of yeah, 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 yeah. so it counts as one. <laughs> <laughs> We're the only ones left, Justin. I've got mine already. You got yeah. Oh. <laughs> Killer is so good. Killer is a good one. That's what I have to say. Killer two. Okay. Killer two. Killer two. <laughs> Killer two. <laughs> Heartfelt. Yeah. Aww. And then one last thing. How did you guys enjoy the pineapple cake? So good. Oh. I like Jada better. Yeah. Okay. That's the one I give to people. You oh, you tried both. Try one. Yeah. Oh, stop it. I stop like them it. all, and thank you very much. Yeah, they were great. No, think with the pineapple. But what's the difference? Can you explain? I think there's more cake to pineapple. Like Joe. I like the thicker cake. Mm. Yeah, I'd say that. So good. Oh, there's something like about the, uh, the moisture. <laughs> <laughs> I think you want to be butter in one. Oh, yeah. Time on to use bread. Stop it. Pineapple cake. No, they're both yeah. unmatched. Yeah. Unmatched. Yeah. Pineapple is so <laughs> soft. Yeah. I think there's a lot of cake to pineapple. We're distracted now. Thank you. No, thank you so much. It was nice talking to you. Watch, Watch the brother's brother son on January fourth on Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> 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 <laughs>